Welcome to week three of our weight loss challenge. You are what you drink. The first rule this week is not to drink your calories. I'm sure this is hard for some of us because we like Coca-Cola or orange juice or other drinks that have uh, that are high in calories, but you're already getting plenty of calories in the food that you eat. So uh, when you take in sugar with liquids, it goes directly to your bloodstream and that causes your blood sugar to spike. And instead of burning the calories from your food, your body starts processing the calories from the beverage you just had. This works for alcohol as well. A lot of people work out and get into calorie burning mode and then they'll go out and have a beer afterwards and that actually stops their body from processing um, their calories that they, you know, into metabolic mode and puts them back into processing that alcohol. That's the only thing that the body knows how to do. So um, you really want to watch uh, your calories in your beverages so that we can ultimately take in less calories, we can keep our blood sugar low and keep our body burning the calories that we bring in as food. So this week, if you put a beverage to your lips, you wanna make sure that it has less than five grams of sugar per eight ounces. If not, choose a different drink. That counts for your alcohol and your coffee as well. The second rule this week is to stay away from carbonation. I know this is tough. Uh, this was really tough for me as well. But can we all agree that eating smaller portions might help us lose weight? Well, when you eat smaller portions spread throughout your day, the size of your stomach is also going to shrink down. And what carbonated beverages do is they expand your stomach back out because they're bubbly, right? So you definitely wanna keep yourself eating smaller portions. And the key to uh, maintaining smaller portions in your diet is to get rid of carbonated beverages. So in order to continue on a positive path to smaller portions in your diet, you'll need to avoid carbonated beverages like carbonated waters, sodas, and beer. Oh, you can't give up soda, right? You can't give up beer. It's so hard. I know I love both of these things, or I did before, uh, but I enjoyed ultimately uh, other beverages that didn't have carbonation that were able to replace those things that I love. So I used to love Diet Coke. I replaced that with Lipton Diet Green Tea. And I also used to really love beer. Um, I was stationed in Germany for a little while, so I loved all the different types of beer. But I replaced that with, uh, with wine and other non-carbonated beverages that I've learned to enjoy just as much. So we talk about, you know, what are the health benefits of, um, of giving up carbonation and especially soft drinks. If, an article in, um, in an athletic magazine talks about the different research done on soft drinks. And the first thing is that many people who consume soft drinks don't reduce, even though those soft drinks give them extra energy, they don't reduce the consumption of other foods to compensate for those extra calories. So that leads to weight gain. Um, and then there's also trends that have been shown between soft drink consumption and an increase in body weight, of course, and then also um, drinking less soda per day. Studies have shown that that results in consumption of milk, oddly. Um, also, it's uh, really unclear all of the chemicals and uh, nutrients in soft drinks, uh, what impacts that's going to have on our bodies. They haven't done enough studies on that. And then also research strongly links soft drink consumption to type two diabetes. The third rule this week, no drinking during meals or 30 minutes after. So my nutritionist gave me this tip and I thought I'd never be able to do this. I'm a thirsty girl. I always like chug drinks during meals and after. And uh, when she explained to me why I shouldn't drink during a meal, it actually made sense. It basically washes everything down and it makes your, it aids in digestion. So it makes your stomach super comfortable. Um, and so it, it allows you to kind of process food easier 
and then you know it sends the food to your intestine much faster and then it leaves room in your stomach for you to eat a whole lot more food so you'll find when you don't drink during a meal that you suddenly feel full very fast and that your stomach is taking the time to process that food. Uh, so you really don't want to be comforting your stomach while you're eating when you're trying to keep your portions small with a fizzy beverage or, um, or a drink. So this week, during a meal, don't even bring a beverage to the table. Just leave it. If you're at a restaurant, uh, ask them to bring you a water and don't drink it. At the start of your meal, the only time I want you to take a sip of water is if you're choking on something. <laughs> but um, you know, just leave it out, don't drink, and then after your meal, set a little timer for 30 minutes, and that's when you can return to your beverage. You'll notice that you stay fuller a lot longer and you eat a lot less. So this tip alone can help you lose the weight. All right. Now we're going to talk about fitness this week. This is our first week talking about fitness and adding fitness into our challenge. This was the most frustrating thing for me. I have been doing CrossFit for three years and I did not lose any weight the first two years. Um, I gained a lot of muscle, but I didn't lose any weight. Um, and after I lost a hundred pounds, people would come up to me and the first thing they would say is, oh my gosh, you look amazing. What gym do you go to? This was so frustrating for me because nobody asked me before I lost the weight, uh, you know, nobody asked me what gym I was going to, even though my workout was harder than most people's, right? I was working very hard in the gym. Uh, so only after I lost the weight in the kitchen did people start asking me what I was doing in the gym, and this was frustrating. And why do people think this? Well, because marketing scams you know, marketing, it screams that fitness leads to weight loss. I agree that moving more helps you burn calories and gets your, gets your metabolism up. But if you continue eating the same amount of calories, the wrong foods in the wrong order, too much food in each sitting, and drinking your calories, it's not gonna matter how much you work out. You're going to be right back where you started. So you have to focus on the kitchen. You have to get your foods and your portions right. So this week we're focusing on not drinking and we're going to add in a, um, a fitness component. So if you want to build your best body, hit up your favorite workout. If you want to lose the weight, hit up the kitchen and the right foods in the right order and the right portions. So this week's fitness challenge is going to be push-ups and squats. Both of these are compound body weight movements. So what does that mean? Body weight movements, those are uh, movements that just use the weight of your body. You're holding up your own body weight. Uh, and then compound movements are those movements that work several muscle groups at one time. So if you combine these two, it's really, really effective because you can do these types of exercises anywhere and you can always make them harder by uh, different levels of an exercise or even by adding weight to your body weight. So this week's challenge is the push-up and squat. Each day, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays will be push-up days. Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays will be squat days. And your goal will be to get 100 reps total throughout the day. So when you're watching the commercials on TV, when you are, you know, um, Working at work and you're sedentary, take a minute, do 10 push-ups. Take a minute, do 10 squats. Um, do this throughout your day and the goal is to get to 100 before you go to bed. Don't save them all for the nighttime, right? That you'll get super tired. So push-ups. Push-ups work your chest, your back, and your abs. I mean, look at that. All over your upper body. How wonderful is that? Level one. This is if you're just getting started with the push-up and you're, you know, really kind of weak in your upper body. The point is to get the form down. So really, you can start here in level one, where you're in the, um, you're up against the wall, and you're just going to push forward and push back. And you're really going to focus slowly on isolating those muscles and working hard. 
If you get the wall down, then what you can do is use a bench or a chair and you can do what she's doing on the bench over here, right? She has, I'm gonna move this out of the way. She has her, her, um, her arms straight and then she's tucking the elbows back and coming straight down. And so that's the, the level one of the push-up. If you've got this down and this is super easy for you, then we're gonna move on to level two. Level two is on your knees. On your knees, you definitely wanna make sure that you have a nice straight line from your knees all the way up and your butt isn't sticking up over here. And then when you come down, you wanna make sure that your elbows are tucked back and behind. Why I have a red X through this one is because look at her elbows, look at how wide her arms are. We wanna keep them nice and close to the body so that we're working our triceps and our chest and uh, all of those great muscles that we saw on the muscle man earlier. Level three of the push-up. If you're really good on your knees and you're ready to take on the full push-up, um, this is the proper way to do a push-up. See how her arms are tucked back and they're not out wide. It's very hard to do this. However, if you work on it at each of the levels, you're going to be able to get to that point and look at how beautiful her muscles look because she's really focusing in on all of the muscles in doing the push-up in this way and keeping her arms tucked. Um, down here would be the advanced level of push-up. That's what we all aim to be able to do. I'm still working on this. It's a handstand push-up. Um, so, you know, if you're not there yet, great. But if you are, then 100 handstand push-ups for you. All right, the next exercise is the squat. Remember, we're doing squats on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Our goal is to get to 100 squats. Uh, this is everything that the squat works. So you can see our abs, our quadriceps, our, our behinds, our calves, everything is worked in the squat. So it's just a beautiful exercise to really, you know, work that body. So level one of the squat, this is where you're just trying to sit back in a chair, really. You're putting that chair behind you and you're trying to sit back and low. Notice how her knees uh, stay behind her toes and she's focusing on kind of getting the, the butt back and toward the chair. If this helps you if you're very, very new at the squat, you can actually sit on the chair. And then as you get better, you can just aim to barely kind of touch the chair and then come back up. But that's the goal of level one, is to get comfortable here. Let's look at level two of the squat. Level two of the squat is to use a lower chair. So uh, maybe a step on your staircase or something that is lower to really get your, your uh, butt back and down. And again, you can sit all the way down on this and, um, and you know then have yourself come back up and then the goal is just to touch it and come back up and then not touch it at all, but get that low and come back up. You notice how her knees still stay behind her toes and she's really sitting back into it. But when she stands up from this lower position, her quadriceps are getting an amazing workout. And that's where you get those beautiful muscle fibers all the way down your legs um, that are really awesome to see. So, and then the intermediate version of level two is where you're really getting low. You have a super low uh, stool here and um, you know, you're know you able to, to touch that and then stand back up. And the advanced level of this obviously is to not need the stool at all. So level three, that's to add weight. So if you're, you know, you already can get pretty low and you're, you know, doing great, then you can add some weight, but still make sure you're keeping those knees behind the toes uh, and that you're keeping the weight close to the body so that you know, you're know you not um, injuring your lower back or anything like that. Um, and then you can see here, I have a picture of someone doing a barbell squat. So that's it. Uh, that's this week. Um, work on to review so that's it. Uh, that's this week. Um, work on to review. We want to make sure that we're not drinking our calories. 
that we are not drinking during a meal and that we're avoiding carbonated beverages. And then our fitness challenge is push-ups and squats. Push-ups are Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and squats are Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and we're aiming for a 100 total reps throughout the day. I'm